Hey, what's up guys? This is King Mac with Barry Outdoors and today we're going over my spring Montana black bear gear list. Starting um, closest to skin, working my way out, I have uh, darn tough socks. They're wool socks. Um, the durability is really good. I've been wearing them for a while and uh, can't complain. They keep my feet warm. I tend to have colder feet and these socks really uh, help out. The socks, I'm just going to jump into the boots while I have them here. These are the Schnee's uh, bare tooth, uh, non-insulated boots. I decided uh, that I'll probably be using these because of the stiffer sole. And wearing these boots during archery season here in Pennsylvania, I've been getting them ready to uh, withstand Montana and all the weight we'll be uh, carrying. And these have uh, came to be a really comfortable pair of boots, so I uh, can't complain. Here I have the Stone Glacier Merino Wool Base Layer. I got the Merino Wool because it sucks the uh, sweat off from your skin, allowing you to be drier. Moving on to my uh, mid-layer pants. I'm taking my Patagonia Quadrant Pants. Uh, these are zip-off pants, so we don't really know what the weather is going to be like out there until we get there. So I want to have an option to sort of be able to release a lot of body heat if I needed to. Another piece that might replace my Stone Glacier top uh, base layer would be the Sitka Core Lightweight Long Sleeve. Um, I have both of these options and I'm still sort of testing them out to see what I like best and what works for me best. Next on the top layer would be the Sitka Core Lightweight Hoodie. Uh, I've been using this a lot. This is probably one of my favorite uh, pieces of apparel purely for the um, hoodie as well as the face uh, covering. Moving to my outer layer pant, I have the Timberline uh, pants. These are awesome. One thing that I love about these the most is the uh, suspenders. Um, I'm a skinny guy um, and they really hold up uh, my pants and I don't have to worry about like a thick belt around my uh, waistline, especially while you're wearing a backpack. So these pants have been great. I also really like the padded knee pads. Um, it really helps when you're stocking up on an animal and you don't injure your knees. Also on the back of these pants, uh, there's a waterproof butt pad that will really be beneficial while you're glassing and you don't get a cold, wet butt. Moving to my mid-layer, I have the Sitka Ambient Hoodie. Uh, this is one of the more recent uh, products that I picked up. Um, I've gotten to be able to use this a few times. And uh, so far, so good. This piece has active insulation with open uh, face fleece. Keeps you warm while you're still, but this three quarter zip allows you to shed heat when you're too warm. Next to my uh, wind layer is my Sitka Jetstream jacket. Uh, I chose this as a, my wind layer, uh, as well as sort of an outer layer when I'm uh, sitting around and it's uh, maybe raining a little bit, this will be able to shed the water. Um, not as good as my uh, rain gear, but it'll be good enough. Uh, what I also like about this is it has uh, pit zips, allowing you to dump body heat when you need to. Uh, really awesome feature of this jacket. A little heavy. I don't. I, that's yeah, just like. If that's the older model. It is. Twenty-two. Yeah. Moving on to my outer puffy layer, I have the Calvin light down three quarter length pants. Uh, I decided to go with the three quarter length pants uh, to save a little weight as well as I run gaiters. So I don't really see any reason to have the full length pants. Um, so far I've used these in uh, rifle season here in Pennsylvania and they've uh, kept me really warm. Um, a little noisy, you might be able to hear on the mic. Um, but a good product and this is what I got. Uh, it also has a zip off feature so you'll be able to zip these off. Moving on to my top layer, I have the Calvin Aerolite down jacket. Uh, this piece is uh, one of my uh, newer pieces and I've uh, really um, gotten to test this a little bit during uh, rifle season here in Pennsylvania. And it's a really surprising piece of uh, apparel. It's really light. It's a lot lighter than the uh, Calvin um, down jacket, which is, uses uh, goose feathers. Uh, this is a uh, Aerolite uh, technology that uh, Sitka created. So it's uh, a lot lighter, um, not as bulky. That was one reason that led me to buy this piece. 
is that it well, wasn't nearly as bulky as the down. Another really surprising thing about this jacket is that it seems to keep you warm, but not overly warm. Like uh, you, you can walk around in this and it, uh, you won't get overly hot from the inside out. But when you're sitting, it keeps you warm. It's a really interesting piece. Moving on to my rain layer, I have both in the bottom as well as in the top, the Sitka Dewpoint uh, rain jacket and pants. I decided to go uh, with the solid color pyrite for the rain gear just um, to get away from everything being camo. I used this uh, during a rainstorm during archery season and it was absolutely downpouring on me and this, these jackets just and pants just bead the water right off. They're really an awesome product and very lightweight. Moving on to all the gear that I'll be taking. Uh, for the backpack, I have the Mystery Ranch Beartooth 80 liter. I really like the Mystery Ranch products. They're really comfortable backpacks. I've used the Mystery Ranch pop-up during archery season. Uh, so I've sort of gotten a feel uh, how the padding feels like. But I haven't really gotten to be able to use this one much. But what I do like about this backpack is that unlike the Metcalf, this has a full zipping uh, closure on like a drawstring. It also has all these different compartments, which I'll be using for uh, spare clothes. Um, nice and big. It also has an outer zipping pocket. And in that, I'll be putting uh, different things like my uh, rain cover for the backpack. I'll be getting uh, quick access things in here, like my uh, puffy layers, my rain gear will be going in here. Overall, it seems like a pretty well-built pack. Um, inside of it, it has an area for my platypus uh, to go into. Overall, it's a pretty good pack, and I'm looking forward to being able to use this on the trip. The bear tooth also has a top lid. Um, in this side, I'll have uh, all my lighting equipment, as well as the Peaks Backcountry Duo uh, headlamp. In this pocket, I'll be having um, most of my fire uh, gear, as well as any uh, survival items or first aid equipment. Uh, I'll also use this for any uh, quick access things that I might be using. Moving on to my sleep system, this is the Big Agnes Lost Ranger. UL 3-in-1 uh, zero degree sleep uh, down sleeping system. So this sleeping system has uh, three sleeping systems in one. So basically you have a mummy bag as well as a quilt. You could use either one of those systems independently from each other. So if I wanted to have just the mummy bag, it'd be 20 degrees. If I wanted just the quilt, it'd be about a 40 degree temperature range. If I combine the two together and put the mummy bag in the uh, quilt, it adds up to a zero degree rating. Obviously, there's some give and take in that. Everybody's different. Everybody sleeps differently. But I went with this um, for the diversity of use. Being able to use this in uh, three different scenarios is going to be really helpful. I don't have all the money in the world, so this is what I went with. For my sleeping pad, I have the Thermarest Neo Air X Therm. It's a 7.3R value sleeping pad. Uh, I decided to go with this pad because uh, it's been said that it's one of the most uh, comfortable sleeping pads. Having a high R value sleeping pad doesn't allow the cold ground to seep into your sleeping uh, system, keeping you a lot warmer. So that's why I went with this uh, sleeping pad. Moving on to the tent, I'm still sort of contemplating uh, taking this tent, the uh, Hillenburg tent, versus uh, another tent I have. This is the Hillenburg uh, Nalo GT4. Uh, it's a four-person tent with a vestibule. Um, I'm going with this tent. It's a little overkill, um, but we don't really know what the temperature and the weather is going to be like out there. Um, having a four-person tent, um, I'm going to have another person in my tent, so we'll be able to have all our gear in out of the weather. Um, again, this tent's a little overkill, but uh, we're going to test it out and see uh, how we like it or not. Um, I also have the footprint for it to keep it um, from puncturing the tent. So this is what we're going to use for the tent. 
Moving on to another uh, topic with the backpack. I have a bunch of these uh, Mystery Ranch Zoid uh, organizers. Um, I'm not going to really go into what's in them, but uh, I'll put hot hands to anything that's sort of bouncing around. So I have a couple of these in the pack. Uh, you saw one earlier with my fire and emergency equipment in it. So there's that. These are the Lecky Makalu FX Carbon. Uh, being really ultra lightweight, uh, making it a little bit easier. Uh, like they say, trekking poles are four-wheel drive, so I think having a heavy pack, this is going to really help out in the backcountry, making sure, you know, not tripping or injuring myself, so I got a good pair of trekking poles. So got a uh, Rab tarp. It's a 118 inches by 144. It'd probably fit about three people underneath it. I figured we're going in the spring. Uh, weather might get a little rainy or snowy, so having a tarp along might be uh, a nice co comfort feature. Um, being able to use the uh, trekking poles and the uh, tarp together to make a TP out while we're glassing is going to be uh, a great morale booster, I think. Um, I'm also bringing a silky saw with me. Um, some of this gear I might not bring with me. Um, it'll sort of be like one of those things that we figure out when we get there. But if we want to build any fires, having a little saw like this will be really nice to make firewood um, while we're out in the backcountry. Uh, some items I forgot to mention earlier are the gators. Um, I like gators. I've been using them recently. And we're going to be out in snow, so it's going to keep the snow from getting in your boots and uh, making the bottom of your pants wet. So I got a pair of Ken and Track gators. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, the bottoms seem to be really durable. haven't ripped yet, so that's great. Um, I also have uh, with me um, a beanie. Oh, this is Go Hunt Beanie Orange. Um, pretty sure Montana is a state that requires orange. Uh, another piece that I haven't gotten yet would be a orange vest. I'm still waiting on uh, getting one of those. I'm looking into getting the Sika Ballistic uh, Orange Vest, so I'm still waiting on that. Uh, for the water filtration system, I went th with the Platypus uh, Quick Draw. Um, this is like uh, most of those straw systems where you could scoop up the water in this uh, bag, the dirty bag, uh, stick it on to this, and it'll drip through your filter, and you can filter any uh, particulates out. This will probably be big, good enough for us, but I also have the Steri Pen. Um, if the water is clear and there's no uh, debris in it, I'll probably just use the Steri Pen. It's quick. Um, and I know that the water will be clean, so I also have the steri pen. I mentioned this earlier. This is a platypus bag, water bag for the in your backpack. This is a three liter bag. Um, it'll be nice to be able to drink from this as we're hiking. So I got the attachment to go through the bag. I'll be bringing a Nalgene bottle. I decided to go with a Nalgene bottle for the big top to be able to put snow in there if I needed to. Uh, for the food system, I have the Jet Boil Micro Mo. Uh, I haven't really used Jet Boils um, at all, so this is going to be a little bit of a learning curve for me. So I got the Jet Boil. I also got the Jet Boil um, fuel container, eight ounces. Another comfort feature would be uh, I got a two ounces pillow. This is the Sea to Summit Arrows pillow, ultra light regular. Um, I'm, I want to be able to sleep really well out there, so I'm taking a pillow with me. So, For my dry bag, for my food, I got the Outdoor Research 15 liter bag. It's just a rollover top uh, waterproof bag so I could uh, keep all my food safe um, up in a tree somewhere away from the bears. So that's what I'll be putting all my food in. I'm not showing any of the food that I'm bringing. Um, I'm still sort of testing out what I want to eat. so. Um, that'll be in another video. Moving on to the kill kit, I have the Caribou Gear, the Carnivore High Country Predator. Um, I've seen good reviews of this bag. I haven't used it yet, so um, uh, it's going to be a little bit of a learning uh, curve for myself. Um, I also am bringing uh, my wedding knife. I got all myself and my dad and my father-in-law uh, this knife. Um, I'm bringing this knife. It's a, a little bit heavier of a knife. It's a full tang knife. Um, some people will bring replacement blade knives. I'm bringing this out of uh, sentimentality, so this is a knife that I'm bringing. 
Uh, moving on to the electronics, um, I think every person going to the backcountry should bring a Garmin inReach, uh, whether it's a mini or another product like this, a cellular uh, phone. Uh, being able to uh, connect to my wife and uh, uh, being able to know that she's good and letting her know that I'm good as well is going to be a real nice comfort feature. Um, if I ever get separated, it's got the SOS. Uh, I could send texts when there's no service. Um, so I think this is going to be a real critical uh, piece of equipment. <clears throat> to charge uh, my phone or lights or anything that I need, as well as the camera that I'm bringing uh, if I need to. I got this uh, Goal Zero um, Venture 75. Um, I think this will charge a phone five times for reference. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be bringing this, but I also have a solar panel full from uh, Goal Zero. So this is sort of, you know, I have it, might bring it, might use it, might not. This is a Nomad 5. So this is another product that uh, I might use, might not. So uh, another thing that we may or may not use is the Rugged Ridge uh, GMRS radios. Uh, being able to be on the opposite side of the mountain, being able to talk to our other group uh, might be a nice thing to have. So this is something that I have, might bring it. Um, it does weather from the GMRS uh, National Weather Service. So this could be another way to know what's happening uh, in the outdoors, in the weather and what our other group is doing. Another piece that I just thought about is my Casio G-Shock watch. Uh, this is a range man. It has altitude, a barometer, temperature, and a compass in it. So it's a nice little piece. It's got alarms if we got to wake up in the morning. Um, probably bringing this watch too. So, so that's all the gear. Uh, starting with my glassing gear, I have the marsupial chest rig uh, with the side pocket as well as my bear spray on the bottom. Uh, on this side, I have a wind checker. In the front, I have a lighter and some fire putty. You never know if you're gonna get separated from your backpack where you might need to start a fire. So that's just something I like to have uh, on me at all times. Uh, in the side pocket, I have this Kestrel wind meter. So uh, we might be taking some longer shots. This is not a ballistic wind meter, unfortunately. Uh, that's something I'm looking into getting in the future, but this will at least help us a little bit with uh, judging wind calls. For glass inside of this, I have the 10 by 42 Fury HD 500s. This is a rangefinder binocular combo. I didn't really uh, see the reason to bring binoculars in a rangefinder. I figured having them combined into one unit would be a little bit more convenient. One thing that I'm missing is I have attachment to put this onto the tripod. I don't have it with me today. Uh, luckily, this is a few weeks before we're leaving. So that's something I have to grab but there's the ability to put this on the tripod and uh, glass through. I also have a tripod, but it's currently being used by the camera filming this, but it'll be able to be able to hold this. So this is the uh, Vortex Razor 85 millimeter. Um, this is a awesome, awesome glassing piece. I went with the 85 to be able to gather a little bit more light. Uh, we're gonna be using uh, the phone scope system on this. So I wanted to be able to get those low light shots through our uh, phones. For glassing, I haven't decided if I'm bringing both of these or one of these at a time. Over here, I just have a standard uh, foam pad Thermarest. Um, in here, I have the Helinox chair. Uh, it's a chair zero. I've been using this during archery season and it is amazing. It probably weighs a, less than a pound, a pound, and it's a fully uh, convertible chair. So this has been really comfortable, really lightweight. It can be a little bit of a burden when you're sitting on a hill. Um, so it's something I sort of got to think about, but either way, I'll be bringing some sort of a, a glassing pad. Moving on to the rifle related products. I have a, a Go Hunt um, ammo wallet. So I'll be able to hold uh, 10 rounds in this. This product is a product that I recently bought. This is a Rugged Ridge Outdoor Gears. Uh, this is a rear uh, rest for your gun. Uh, multiple adjustments. I think it has four adjustments. So you could go from a really low profile uh, rest for the rear of your gun 
all the way to a very high profile. So this makes uh, prone shots amazing. It uh, makes your gun so, so steady. Um, I highly recommend this piece. Got it in the orange so I can't lose it type of thing. Uh, very lightweight. I think it's made out of aluminum, so very awesome product. The rifle, I am bringing my 7 Rem Mag. This is the Browning X-Bolt Hell's Canyon. Um, I really love this gun. This is a gun I recently got. I've been building it out, and recently uh, we've been shooting this gun at 468 yards uh, at a 10-inch target, and it's been spot on. Uh, also, on top, I have the Vortex 5x25 um, Strike Eagle. This is an amazing scope. This is the first scope that I've had that allows you to make adjustments for elevation and windage. It has a light-up reticle, and it has parallax adjustment. Um, I also have this throw lever on it to be able to uh, zoom in and out quicker. On the side, I have a flip out bubble level, so making a level shot at those longer distance. Out in the front, I have the Magpul bipod. It allows you to go from 6 inches to 10 inches. Flips up and out of the way. On the back, I have a Bradley Arms uh, adjustable cheek rest. Um, this is just how it sort of fits my face, uh, being able to have a adjustable cheek rest to get it. So when you put your cheek there, you're looking straight out. The uh, scope is a really important uh, aspect of uh, having a long range rifle. So this is a gun I'm taking. On the side, I have a short action precision uh, bullet carrier. This is something I may or may not uh, bring on the trip, but Sometimes when I'm shooting long distance, I like to single feed the gun, so this is just something I have on. All right, guys, this is all the gear I'm bringing on my Montana Spring Black Bear Hunt. I ask you to please like and comment. Uh, any comments uh, would be helpful. Let us know how we're doing. Uh, any gear that I might be missing. I also ask you to please uh, subscribe. We have a really great season coming up. A lot of things are going to be happening. Uh, we're building this brand to be something to educate people, um, educate ourselves as well. So like I said, any comments would be great. So stay tuned for some more great videos. We plan on releasing some podcasts as well. So uh, please subscribe.